and welcome to the very first episode of the Eurogamer Show, your weekly slice of all things Eurogamer. Every Friday we'll be bringing you insights from the editorial team, features you won't find anywhere else, and a whole heap of general nonsense. Oh, Aoife, this is really weird. Is it? Yeah. Oh can god, I just I can just see you with your arms crossed in there, it's horrible. But will he survive? Yes, quite plainly I'm still here. Find out later in the episode. Yeah. But before all that, our editor Ollie got a very special behind the scenes look at Valve's Vive VR headset recently, and quite frankly, he was blown away. We decided to talk to him about it, but will he survive? You suck. Ollie Miles, you join us in the week of Bloodborne, which is an exciting time for a lot of people, including Rich Denton, who's tackling it for Eurogamer. Uh, yeah, it's looking really good. Rich absolutely loves it, and he's a massive fan of the original Dark Souls. He wasn't so keen on Dark Souls 2. Um, and so, yeah, we're expecting it to review really oh, well. Well, oh, well. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, um, something that you've been rather excited about yourself recently is uh, where Valve are going with uh, virtual reality. You checked out the HTC Vive. And it absolutely blew me away. I was really lucky to get to try this out at Res. They weren't doing a lot of press demos, but I managed to sort of sneak in via a back door. It was an amazing experience. First up, uh, I'd been to the BAFTAs the night before. I had an appalling champagne hangover, <laughs> and it didn't make me feel motion sickness. Right. And the, I think the reason for this is, as you probably know, um, the difference with Steam VR and HTC Vive is it <laughs> lets you walk using your actual legs around uh, a 15 foot by 15 foot space, rather than experience it from a fixed point sure. the way you do on Oculus. That is and the so big difference, isn't it? That, that you move around and explore. Because you don't have that feeling of you being sat still, but the world around you moving, <laughs> moving in the virtual world, you don't have that weird disconnect. So I think that's one of the reasons it's a lot better on motion sickness. But over and above that, it just completely transforms the VR experience. It's just a whole different level. And I can understand some people being reluctant to try it or worried about, reasonably worried about how they're going to fit that yeah, 15 Larger by 15 space. feet, right? So you're going to need a VR room you're at some need, point. You're going to need future. either the ability to clear a lot of space <laughs> in the living room or somewhere that you've uh, yeah. a special little padded cell that you can go <laughs> wow, okay. and enjoy your, your virtual worlds in. But um, it's just amazing. Like it, it, So if you think about when you're playing an FPS, you're sort of looking through a window like this at mm -hmm. stuff in the middle distance to far distance yep. and sort of pointing towards it. Whereas in this uh, virtual space, you're really focused on the stuff that's really immediately close to you. And it's, it's very different, it's much more tactile, it's much more intimate, and it requires, I think, a whole different approach to, to building virtual environments and to, and to game design. Well, it? there isn't really vocabulary for games that quite works around this yet. No. We don't know where it's going to go. We, we're going to have to reboot. Uh, oddly enough, like the stuff that most convinced me was not the first person stuff that most people are exploring on Oculus. It's like strategy games. It's stuff where you can have a miniature world in front of you and, oh, and like loom, loom over it. it like <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of demos. We both went for loom there, that's good. Yeah, a couple of demos that explored that and I thought they were really, really interesting. So that's an area to watch out for on SteamVR, I think. Okay, well, that's just continued to make everyone that hasn't tried that yet really quite jealous. But um, yeah, there's a bigger piece on the site. Um, Ollie has given some impressions and Rich Ledbetter from Digital Foundry has also talked about it. Yeah. It sounds really good and really different to the yeah. rest of the VR Definitely world. worth keeping an open mind about, but you know, who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of years there. Fair enough. Thanks, Ollie. Well, there you go. But while most of us mere mortals didn't get a go on Vive at Res, there was still plenty of virtual reality stuff going on. Indeed, between Samsung, Oculus, Sony and now Valve, there's a lot going on in VR. So much so that it's easy to get confused. I know I was. So I've decided to demystify things a little bit. Ah, the Oculus Rift. Feels like it's been around forever, and yet there's still no word of an actual retail release date. In fact, that's kind of true of VR all over. There are loads of companies competing to be king of the awkward plastic headset, and yet it still feels like a distant promise rather than a reality, virtual or otherwise. Partly because people have a natural resistance to strapping a pair of bulky goggles to their head. Plenty of people are working to lessen the barrier to entry and make the experience feel more natural, like the makers of the Roto VR chair. By adjusting the direction you're facing with your feet, the Roto hopes to eliminate players' reliance on the right analog stick, increasing the perceived link between one's own body and the digital representation on screen. But as Chris so ably demonstrates, it still makes you look like a bit of a tool. Control it using my feet like this, which is really, really quite strange to comprehend. 
But hey, maybe we should just all get over ourselves, lest we miss out on some seriously impressive tech. The Oculus is still widely considered the standard when it comes to new headsets trying to muscle in on the burgeoning VR industry. But it's not alone, not by a long shot. Almost it from us, just time for one little extra for you. See, the four-person Eurogamer video team has only really come together over the last couple of months, so we're still working on our sense of teamwork and cooperation. Yeah, so we decided to speed the process up a little bit with a bit of healthy competition. And what competition could be more healthy than burying half the team alive and then asking the other half to get them out before they suffocate? In retrospect, I'm not entirely sure what we were thinking. No. To Phobos is an interactive coffin experience in which one person gets buried alive, i.e. lies down in a coffin with an Oculus Rift, headphones and microphone on, then feeds clues to the person trying to find them before their air runs out, i.e. the one running around the game world. Aoife and I teamed up, as did Ian and Chris. Here's what happened. Okay, it's time to put Chris in the coffin. This this is a weird job and I'm not sure I like it anymore. Do I need Rather to take my me. shoes on? Is that right? Or should, I, should I just go in? Right. I don't want to be rude. <laughs> It's your turn. Do I really want to do this? Yes, I'm not do. sure I want to do this. Oh, oh, right, okay. Do you trust me? This is a really good trust exercise. Trust is a strong word. Oh, there's a cushion. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. I'm I don't blame sure. you. I wouldn't trust me. Okay. Well, that's that doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. <laughs> oh, Excellent. I can hear you. Ian. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I've got feet. I've got feet. <laughs> Oh, Aoife, this is really weird. Is it? Yeah. Oh, can... God, I just I can just see you with your arms crossed in there. It's horrible. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. You are really in there now. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Chris, I've never played this game before. I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing. To Phobos, an interactive coffin experience. Uh-huh. I'm in some kind of first-person church-like environment. Okay, well, just have a wander around, and I'll tell you yeah. if anything changes. Oh, blimey. Okay, right. Down below where the dead do play. Down That's, below. I feel like that might be a hint, Ian. I'm okay. not sure. Down below where the dead do play says the lid of the coffin okay, now. Okay, so that's like a crypt, right? So, oh, uh -huh. I find, yeah, I find some stairs. A wall, there. broken. Freedom, perhaps? So maybe I've got to find some stairs down. That, Have I got a certain amount sense. of time before your air runs out or something? Is that... <laughs> um, what, as in within the game or within real life here? Probably both. Oh, I'm w the character is wearing some, like, a lovely shirt. A wall, broken. Freedom, perhaps? A broken wall. You need to find a broken wall. The, oh. the, the perhaps of the freedom thing is a bit too speculative for my yeah, liking. If it was wall. freedom for sure, that would be great. Oh, I just headbutted the top of the coffin. <laughs> All right, I've okay, just found good. out that there's a jump button. Right, good. It helps. Okay, yeah, through the broken You're wall. You're not feeling more confidence here, Ian. You've only just figured out the controls. That's, that's not great. <laughs> I was expecting you to have that locked down. I'll save you, Chris. Pretty early on. I'll, I'll save you, I promise. Oh, 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 okay. I'm in a room with lots of coffins. Oh, I'm in a coffin. Yeah? Yeah. All right, well, how, <laughs> how do I know which one's yours? Uh... Tell me which one you're in. I don't know which one I'm in, Aoife. It's wooden on the inside. <laughs> oh, yeah, I found them. Hurrah! Huzzah! Huzzah! Uh, hooray, I'm still in the coffin, by the way. Don't forget me. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, oh, fresh air. Excellent. There we go. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he didn't die. All right. That was, that was weird. That was about as weird as you'd imagine being locked in a coffin with an Oculus headset. Oh, oh, oh. Huh? Yay, I find you. I'm alive? Ugh. It's alive. <laughs> that was quite unpleasant. <laughs> Oh. Saved your life. No big. I feel really sick. Do like, you? Not in like an Oculus way, like in a... <laughs> I looked down at my feet and it was just like, oh, that's really... Oh, okay. <laughs> um, thanks for, for that. <laughs> Tell me which coffin you're in. Really? What? I got you out, didn't I? I was tempted to leave you to rot after that whole Mooly Survive jive. Anyway, that's it from the Eurogamer show. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and we will see you next week. What? I said I was tempted. Didn't do it. One of the best online shooters I've played in ages, just because it's a bit different. Yeah, that's that's the thing, isn't it? One, like, other than maybe Sunset Overdrive, it's perhaps the most colourful game I've seen in the third-person shooter. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it is, it is just all about colour, basically. The whole thing is just about, like, you've obviously got all this ink splashing around everywhere as one of your, as your characters mm -hmm. kind of... Um, Throw ink around the stages, so it is a game based around colour, and it, and it's just super refreshing to see yep. that. Very Nintendo.